Hello everyone, welcome to my 1cc commentary and review of what I think is the most underrated Batman game of all time. In fact, I feel like it is probably just one of the most underrated games of all time. This is a game that I've loved to play over the years. I think it is a very well made, timeless classic. And yet, whenever you talk about Super Nintendo, whenever you talk about Batman, whenever you talk about beat em ups, no one talks about this game. No one mentions it. I went through the top 10, top 5 Batman games of all time, and nowhere on those lists was this game to be seen. And that's including stuff like Telltale Batman when that's making the list and this game isn't. You know something is deeply wrong. Same thing with best Super Nintendo beat em ups. Haven't seen it on that list. And so I thought, okay, not only does this game deserve to be talked about just because of the quality of the gameplay, but also because I think it is crazy overlooked and so this may be one of those videos where when people say hidden gem it's a hidden gem this may be an actual hidden gem where yes it is known but hardly anyone ever talks about it even I was looking up on speedrunning I was looking up gameplay videos you know looking especially playing on the highest difficulty mode here not much to be had not much to be talked about I tried to look up on game facts uh, some guides to the boss fights nothing's there so I thought okay something needs to be done here because this game is absolutely superb it is a game that i've had on my super nintendo growing up for years and it is a konami classic that is just vastly overlooked and i can't even understand why it's a beat em up it's by konami and it's batman returns i mean how many winning ingredients does a game need to have before it gets some recognition but let's talk about this game so batman returns is interesting because it's made by konami but it has a bunch of different versions i think there's a sega genesis version and um, Master System version, I think, even. And the thing about it is, it's one of those games from back in the day where the different versions are actually different versions. In fact, they're basically different games. Batman Returns on the Super Nintendo, though, is a beat em up in the vein of something like Turtles in Time on the Super Nintendo, which everyone loves, which has had, I guess, a remake before, and now they're going to remake it again. People can't get enough of Turtles in Time. I'm a huge fan of Turtles in Time. In fact, recently I did a no death hard clear of that. I'll probably have a commentary video for that soon as well. So I'm no slouch in that game. I'm a huge fan of it. But at the same time, of the two, I would say, beat em up wise, I think Batman Returns is the better game. It is very challenging. It is interesting. The combat system is beautifully done and not something I've ever come across before or since, really. There's um, elements of it that you'll see in other games. And you'll find that I felt like this game may have been influential in beat em ups that came after it with like Streets of Rage 4. There's some levels and things in it that make me think, oh, they played some Batman Returns. But I think people really underestimate what this game has to offer. So let's dig into a little bit of the mechanics of this game and how it works. Unfortunately, I'm in the second level here. And so I guess I'll go over the overall structure of the game. So mostly the game is a side scrolling beat em up of epic proportions. But from time to time, you get these side-scrolling sort of um, run-and-gun sections, which I think are pretty well done and pretty fun. They're not anything along the lines of Metal Gear or Metal Slug quality, but they're still very, very good. Interesting, if you're trying to play this game for score, this is where your run ends because it turns out there's an infinite milk in this uh, level. You can just sit here and milk it infinitely. Konami, naughty, naughty boys, you should have been watching out for that. So in the terms of world record scores, high score play, Unfortunately, this game is a bit of a dead end there because you, there's an infinite milk in stage two here. It's not hard to pull off. It's just a matter of how patient are you? I am sure you could continue on for hours and hours and hours. You could Todd Roger it and play for, well, like a week straight or whatever he claimed in one of those records. Um, but in any, any case, yeah. So score play wise, this game is a bit of a dead end there, which is unfortunate, but not many people play beat em ups for score anyway, so I don't think it's as big of a deal as something like a shmup that has a dead scoring system. Turtles in Time has the same issue as well, so I think it's a common beat em up issue as far as playing them for score. But here we go. So now we're in the sec or third stage here, or second stage, but they have scenes. So this is the third scene, second stage. A little bit confusing. This second stage, though, is a mile long. It's a huge stage with... Uh, three different sections and the thing is I'm playing on mania mode so this is the highest difficulty of the game and what mania mode does is that it's one of those great what Konami is really good at is they don't just make the enemies tanks and they don't just fill it out with a cheap effort no whenever they increase the difficulty modes of their games at least the ones that I've played 
they do a really good job of adding some real differences, some real changes that do impact the level design, do impact your routing, do impact everything. So let me go over the Mania mode changes. First of all, if you haven't played this game before, this is actually a pretty difficult beat em up. This is not um, in the quality of something like Turtles in Time where, I mean, I'm getting to the point in Turtles in Time where I'm beating the game in hard mode without dying. I mean, that's how good. Um, the game is challenging, but it's not really all that challenging. Batman Returns, on the other hand, is much more challenging of a beat em up and it took me a good amount of time grinding runs to get this mania clear and that's just a clear imagine a mania no death run that would be even harder the thing about it though is that there's so many um mechanics in this game there's so much to work with batman's got so much in his arsenal and he's so well made that the game is just never boring it's not repetitive at all you can grind the game i sat and grind in this game for like six hours it was some of the most fun i've had playing a game in a very very long time and i play a lot of really fun games this includes beat em ups like fight and rage and stuff i wouldn't say this game is necessarily better than fight and rage but it's really well made and it's a lot of fun if you're a fan of beat em ups you cannot go wrong with playing batman returns you're just gonna absolutely love it so let's talk about the mechanics before i get too sidetracked here so what makes Batman Returns interesting is it has a lot of systems going on with the mechanics and also has an exploit that I actually don't think is necessarily that much of an exploit. I think Konami were well aware of it because the game is sort of designed around it and you'll find in certain boss fights that uh, you can't fully... I think it's like one of those things like Battle Garega where it wasn't 100% anticipated what people could do, but it was recognized that people could abuse it to some degree. So anyway... Unlike most beat em ups, Batman Returns has a block button so you can block. The thing is, is that the game doesn't really reward you for blocking. It's not a very useful mechanic overall for the most part. If you're using it defensively, like if an enemy is coming at you and you block, there's a lot of hits done in this game, not only for the enemies, but for yourself. So if you get, a, get in the corner and block, you could just get locked into your block and get the crap beaten out of you. So on the surface, for the first few years when I was younger playing this game, I thought, you know, the block mechanic really isn't all that useful. It's kind of a neat idea, but it didn't really work out. Turns out the block mechanic is the magic ingredient because after playing some Virtua Fighter, uh, this is a true story, after playing some Virtua Fighter, I started to realize and I started to understand the idea of block canceling. That's something that you see in Virtua Fighter and fighting games that have blocks. And this is why people who dislike block mechanics and say they're stupid or pointless should maybe rethink their position a little bit because one thing that blocking introduces, that manual blocking introduces in beat em ups and in fighting games is the idea of block canceling. So how does this work? So in this game, whenever you're doing a combo, you know, one, one, two, three, you usually punch, punch, and then you do this nice big kick. Instead of finishing your combo, you can block and cancel it and then you can cancel it over and over again. So you basically can manually change your strings so that you're never doing that big finish kick, which is strong, but it has a huge amount of slowdown. It has a huge amount of recovery and it leaves you vulnerable when you're getting swarmed. This is a really important um, mechanic to understand in this game. Otherwise, you're going to get absolutely mauled. So you have that. You can do block, str uh, block um, cancels, and those are very useful, especially in boss fights, but also just crowd control. However, that's not the only system this game has going on for it. That in itself would be fun, and a lot of games have this in some degree, like Sailor Moon, you can sort of block cancel if you step backwards. It's not really a block cancel, but it's a cancel anyway. But this has an extra uh, layer of mechanics that make it really fun, which is the grab system. This is my favorite grab system in any beat em up that I've played. I like it more than... Um, you know, like the Capcom style grab systems. I like it more than the Turtles in Time grab si system. I even like it more than the Fight and Rage grab, si grab system, which is saying something. So the way it works is you can simply walk up and grab. But Batman, he's a strong boy. He can carry people around very effectively. And then he can do a lot of different things to his enemies with the grab. So you can grab him. You can carry him around. You can do a punch uh, string on him, like punch, punch, kick. You can throw him. If you grab two people, hopefully up here soon I'll show you. If you grab two people, you can slam their heads together, which is effective because sometimes people run into you when you're grabbing, but also it does a crap load of damage. So there's that. And then when you get really advanced, what you can do is you can grab. You can kind of punch them in the face a little bit, cancel your grab, re-grab, and then pummel them again. I guess if you're a fan of melee, 
Um, it's almost like uh, wobbling people. You can uh, do these sort of chain pommel grabs. And here you see me in the corner. This is the danger that I was talking about. When you play in Mania mode, I forgot to mention this. When you play in Mania mode, what it does is it increases the enemy speed and ruthlessness. So not only do they, instead of increasing health, which I always think is kind of meh because it always slows down the pace of the game. Instead, what they did is they made the enemies just more fearsome. They come at you faster. They punch you quicker. Uh, they have less recovery. And if you get cornered, they'll just punch lock you to death. So it's scary, but luckily the game gives you some mechanics to get out of this. For one, you have your bat boomerang. This is the key ingredient to um, effective uh, handling of these more aggressive enemies where when you throw your bat boomerang at, or whatever it is, I don't know what the thing is, the bat battering, I think is what it's called, at them, it stuns them for a second. In the lower difficulties, this it gives them a gives you a healthy amount of stun, so you can like hit them from across, not across the screen, but from fairly far away and walk up and grab them or beat them up. In Mania mode, that stun lasts a very short amount of time. So you basically have to get pretty much right out of punch range and then bat rang them and then punch them or grab them so you have to get closer it makes you play a little bit more aggressively play it's just a really good way to add difficulty without slowing down the pace of the gameplay basically making your stuns for your batterings weaker but still effective but also if you get punched you're gonna get wallop and here's my very first exploit so here we go this is a key example of the punch guard cancel and this is one of the few bosses where you can just straight up exploit it on him like this. Um, you, this is why I think people think this game has a little bit of a reputation for being broken. I think in the sphere of beat-em-ups and all kinds of BS that most beat-em-ups allow you to get away with, I don't think it's necessarily all that broken. On that boss fight, it certainly is. But as you'll see, we're going through, even when you can um, punch a guard lock people like that, it's not really universally applicable across the boss fights and you do have to do certain setups and you do have to understand the fights and it does add a fun little dynamic to the game but yeah you can really get away with uh guard locking people and i think that's if you're playing in the lower difficulties it is a very powerful mechanic that seems to be overpowering the thing about it is when you play in mania mode the offsetting factor of it is just the movement speed of the enemies and they swarm you really hard so you can't just sit there and guard lock people over and over because you'll just get swarmed. So it does force you to still know the underlying um, fighting mechanics of the game, which I think is really useful. So here we go into the second or third um, side-scrolling section. This one's the longest one and probably the most intricate. It's really not all that hard because like any good uh, side-scrolling shooter or uh, running gun, whatever, not side-scrolling shooter, sorry. Like any good running gun, the key to doing well is ducking and shooting, right? This seems to be a running trend in uh, running guns. So there's a duck. Duck and shoot is very strong. Same thing in this game. So in this section, all you really have to do is you just need to position yourself, duck, and throw your uh, batterings at people. And also, if you get close, you'll go into punches. These sections are, they're kind of fun. They're not really all that challenging once you get the hang of them. The real deal, though, is that coming up is the most difficult boss fight in the game. And I think what's interesting about this game, it has a very interesting difficulty curve that I kind of like. Um, I don't think it's going to be as well liked for people who don't play the game all that much. But the way it works is the first stage is relatively challenging, actually. And then the second stage, uh, stage is challenging in that it is a little bit ramped up over the first stage and just longer. And then, of course, if you're playing on Mania mode, you don't have nearly as many health pickups. And then the third stage here, the stage itself, it's easy for the most part, except the boss fight, which is absolutely brutal and by far the hardest boss fight in the game to get out of consistently without dying. So Catwoman in this fight is, is a ruthless, you know what, <laughs> she is awful. Um, she is really, really tough to deal with, especially in Mania mode, because... She has this attack here, you see where she does this uh, sort of swarm across the screen. If she hits you, she takes half a bar. So if you don't know how to do this fight, you can literally lose, you know, three or four lives on this lady. Easy. And I, I think what happened, especially for a lot of people playing this game when they were kids, is they're doing well, they're getting a hang of the game, then they come up against Catwoman, and the game is over. And what makes this game nasty is the second hardest boss fight is right after Catwoman. And you have to fight Catwoman twice, as you'll see coming here. So 
there's a huge difficulty spike near kind of like two thirds the way in and then it gets a little bit easier in the train stage but not necessarily all that easier and then the last stage is just really hard so you get a little bit of like a spike a little bit of dip and then another spike so i think that's what makes it interesting in normal mode there's a way to abuse her where you can you can't stun lock her so i was saying like before people were saying oh the stun locking system with the punch cancels is broken because you can just do that on all the bosses mm, no you can't you can't do that on catwoman that's why i think they were pretty aware of it because catwoman will just bust out of it and beat you down so what you have to do, a little strategy you can do up in the corner that I was showing there is you can re-grab her, re-grab her, but you can only do that three times, and then she'll go into an in invincible spin attack. And then in normal mode, you can kind of pick her up and redo it after the spin attack. In mania mode, she covers the screen so much that it's a nightmare to try and dodge it. And the best way to do it is just hit her with the test tubes. Those are your bombs, basically. And you get three per stage, and they do refill per stage, which is really nice. I think um, one of my strategies was that I was going to save a bunch of the test tubes and use them all on Catwoman, but unfortunately you're not able to hoard them. But at the same time that's good in Mania mode because your item pickups are drastically reduced and I think you only get one extra tube as an item pickup throughout the whole mode. So I mean getting them refilled per stage is the much better way to, it's a much kinder way to go. So uh, be sure to use them on Catwoman is what I'm getting at. So here we go. This stage. Um, what makes this section really difficult is the enemy combinations and also these uh, blue clowns in regular mode aren't really that much of a problem but in mania mode they move quickly and if they get you in that punch lock you're basically a goner so you don't want to get punch locked and then they swarm you like this they move around very quickly you have to be very careful with your positioning got to be patient if you can get them lined up oh and i forgot to mention some of the other throw mechanics sorry um, so you see me doing a throw mechanic here where if there's a stage with a wall in the back, you can throw the enemies up into the wall just like that. At first, it doesn't seem all that useful until you realize that you can use it to sort of sweep enemies that are above you. So a real strategy for crowd control in this game that's really useful is get them, go lower on the screen, then throw them up and kind of catch everyone else. And then you can, once Batman's on top of them, Batman's good. You can punch lock him, you can beat them down, you can grab them. Once you can get on top of the enemy, you got him. It's just an issue of getting in because his movement speed isn't all that far and his range isn't all that far either. His punch, you can barely punch outside of most people's punch ranges. Got whipped here. So now you have to fight Catwoman a second time. Luckily, the second Catwoman fight has an exploit that you'll see here. So you can punch lock her the second time around because they remove her invincible attack. And they also just remove her falling over from the punch lock the second time around. Again, maybe that's intentional. So that's a, a relief where um, if you had to fight her twice in a row without the punch lock, that would be a nightmare. And then going into the second hardest boss fight, or I, I consider probably the second hardest boss fight, which is Penguin 1. So you have to fight Penguin twice. This is the first version. And you have to fight him, unlike most of the other boss fights, in running gun mode. So you don't have your normal um, beat him up. Instead, you got to fight him like it's Metal Slug. What's really hard is this dude uh, swarms you. Every time it hits you, it does a ton of, ton of damage. And you have to actually really practice this like a shmup fight. The, because you have to know how to position him. You have to know how to lead him around. Um, he has massive hitboxes on everything. Poor Batman has a big old hitbox. And he takes a ton of damage. And then this attack is just obnoxious. Where he'll come on the screen. And it seems there's some sort of way to influence it. I've looked everywhere on Gamefacts, on YouTube, everywhere I can. Strategy guides. There doesn't seem to be any sort of explanation as to why he picks certain directions. I tried controlling for different variables, but and it would seem like, oh, I figured it out. Like if you're further to the right, he'll come to the left or further to the left to come to the right. Except sometimes he won't. <laughs> so that doesn't seem to work. Um, I tried just staying. The real pick is either just be ballsy and pick a mo pick a direction and just fire and hope he doesn't hit you. Or you can try if you're really good, you can position yourself in the center and sort of Go left, right, left, right, left, right really quickly. That's hard to sort of pull off. And so sometimes I found in this one, I just kind of picked it based on intuition. Because I do think there is probably some kind of underlying logic to his uh, sides that he picked. But it's hard to really know. Here we go to the Batman, Batmobile stage. This stage is actually pretty easy if you're um, any good at F-Zero, basically. Because it's this is a fun little stage where they 
busted out the old uh, Super Nintendo, uh, what's it called, Mode 7, which I think is pretty effectively done. Uh, it looks really cool. It's really fun to play. Um, the, the level, though, it's a, it's a basically like a bonus level. You know how Konami has those in Turtles in Time, whether it's the sewers or Neon Knight Riders. That's kind of the effect here. The really nice thing about it is it's just a nice level to get uh, bonus points, which will lead into extends. If you want to be a cheap little, you know what, <laughs> if you want to be cheap, uh, an easier way to get a mania clear, which I wouldn't recommend because it doesn't seem in the spirit of the game and also doesn't seem very fun, is if you are in stage two, I said there is that infinite. If you go ahead and just milk that infinite, you can get yourself nine extends. That's not going to guarantee the clear, actually, if you don't have experience in the game, because you can actually very easily melt those extends away because there's no health pickups and being able to effectively control the enemies is really the only way to preserve yourself. Um, even if you had nine extends, if you didn't know the boss fights, if you didn't know how to um, deal with the enemy patterns, you probably could easily melt away those nine extends. This isn't one of those games where you can resource spam your way through it. And also with an extend, you don't regain your bombs, so you can't redo that. You only regain your bombs through per stage but you don't regain them per life. So if you didn't know the cat woman fight, for example, I don't even think nine extends would save you, especially then after you have to fight penguin. So you, I don't think there's any way to resource spam your way around it. But if you are more familiar with the patterns of the game, you could resource spam yourself a little bit of extra wiggle room, right? I don't recommend that though, because sitting there and um, milking the infinite for nine extends sounds like a nightmare. Honestly, it'd probably take you about 20 minutes to do. So that doesn't sound like a fun way to spend your time playing the game. But I'm just saying if, if you really had to get the mania mode clear, you just had to have it. Like That's a way to do it. So here's the boss fight. This is actually probably one of the easier boss fights in the game. All you have to do is hang to the right when he drops those. And then you can see sort of um, go side to side and they rocket launch. This actually reminds me a little bit of the Dark Knight. Speaking of Batman games, isn't there a part in the Dark Knight where Joker gets in a sort of thing like this and they fight in the Batmobile. Um, maybe there's something like that in Batman Returns. I've actually only seen Batman Returns once. This is kind of like Goldeneye, where I've seen the movie once, but I've played the game a million times and actually can um, associate the game with the property much more than the movie. So here we go. This train stage. I think this stage influenced the train stage of Streets of Rage 4. So if you're a fan of Streets of Rage 4, I'm pretty sure that's where they got the idea for the train stage, especially because there's very specific sections of the stage that are just like the stage in uh, Street to Rage 4. But okay, so these fat clowns, the thing about them is if you have them under control, they're not too bad. However, if you get them sort of spread out on the screen, they're going to melt you away because especially the blue ones, if you try and jump at them, they'll hit you with an invincible attack, like an anti-air. They'll shuriken you, or whatever you call it, shuriken you. They'll do the dragon uppercut on you if you try to jump in on them, so that doesn't work. And then if you try and throw the bat at them, battering at them and stun them, you have to be right up on them because the stun doesn't last all that long. So the real way to do it is you just have to anticipate them spawning. You have to memorize a lot of the spawn patterns of this game if you want to do it effectively, and then just set yourself up this section here, this this level is definitely very troll with the sections. There's a lot of environmental hazards in this stage, which most of the other stages don't have. The first one you run up against is this dude throwing bombs at you from the back. Really, you just have to um, misdirect him and go around him. Kind of a shmup-like tactic, actually. Um, there's no defeating him or anything like that that I'm aware of. You just have to misdirect him. Um, move yourself around the bombs. Then you see these sort of uh, crazy green clowns with the suicide bombs. Um, hit them with a the battering, they'll drop the bomb. The knife throwing clown, you have to hit him with a battering. That makes him, that forces him to drop his knives. If you don't, this dude will lock you down from across the stage. And in Mania Mode, you cannot allow that to happen because you'll get swarmed and die. That's the scary part about Mania Mode is if you get hit at all, and there's anything around, you might just get swarmed and absolutely destroyed. So this is why I'm using my test tubes early in the stage, because this is one of those stages where the boss fight is not too bad if you can pull it off. Oh, here we go. So here's a section that will definitely destroy you the first time you play the game if you're not aware of it, which is you have these beams, right? And uh, Batman isn't all that mobile. And so if you try and you can't jump out of certain strings, right? So if you're in the middle of your kick, you can't jump out of your kick, right? This isn't Bayonetta. 
So you, the way to deal with this is really just try and stun lock them with the batterings and avoid them and then just jump and slowly sort of creep your way forward. And this is based, oh, these blue clowns jump it too. That's a nightmare. Am I able to pull this off? Because I want to save this extent. There is a health upgrade right at the end here, and I'm not sure if I'm able to pull it off or not. Um, the thing about this game that is nice is as long as you have a sliver of health and some skill, you can get through the stage. You can know, I am certain you can no miss the game without getting hit, at least the sections I can think of. There isn't a lot of sections that, oh no, I got hit there. I knew I, it was too good to be true. So here we go. Now we've through that section here. This section isn't all that bad, except for the fact that it has some really ruthless enemy combinations. So certain enemies, when you fight them solo, aren't all that bad. Another point of this game that's fantastic, by the way, I don't want to forget to mention, is the enemy variety. There's a real nice selection of different enemies, and they complement each other really well. Masterfully designed game overall. But anyway, the enemy combinations that you want to avoid that are scary are the sword, sword guys, because you can't stun them with your battering, and they have massive reach. They actually have a longer reach than you, so the only way to deal with them is to go up and around them. Okay, here we go. This is the stun lock that I was talking about, where you can stun lock this guy. The problem is that he has his little army swarming around you, so you do have to set yourself up pretty carefully, and you do need to know the underlying boss fight, because the likelihood that you'll get a perfect stun lock, where you can stun lock him and the enemies, which can happen, but it's not that easy to pull off, is pretty hard to set up, and so you're still going to have to know the enemy patterns here, because if he hits you with that attack, it's half a bar, so he can kill you with two hits. That's the thing about Mania Mode is when you're when it's going well, it doesn't look all that challenging. But the thing is, is two hits and you're dead. One hit and you're dead. I mean, you're it's like playing a shmup as far as the amount of health you have on reserve. And so here we go. This isn't a great situation. I've got him down to orange health, though. So he doesn't have a whole lot of health left. But it, the challenge is I'll use that guy as a human shield. That's another cool thing in this game is if you're holding someone and someone shoots a projectile at you like the bazooka guys. The guy you're holding in front of you, you can actually use as a human shield. Here we go, stun locked him right at the end there, right when the sliver of health is able to pull through, which is really good. Um, you want a lot of resources coming to the last stage. This is, you know, my only mania clear, but it's a very clean run. And so if you're looking to get the clear in this game, I think this replay is probably the best one you're going to find. There was another mania clear that I watched, but some of the boss strategies in it and stuff were definitely not the best to go away to go with. And I think... This clear actually had more resources at the end than the other clear. And I, I just think the boss strategies are better. Especially this boss fight, which I'll show you. But anyway, so here we go. State The final stage. This stage is all about testing you on all the stuff you've learned before. And you can get stun locked in a second in this stage. It's a very, very difficult stage. And also has some sections that are kind of BS, to be honest. But we'll get to those when we get there. Um, that's why it's always nice to have some extra resources. So the motorcycle guys, there's... There's three ways to take them down. You can punch them and kick them, but that doesn't do a lot of damage, and you're almost always guaranteed to get ran over them if you try and do it. So the most effective way is to hit them with a battering, but they are surprisingly sometimes difficult to hit because they'll sort of swerve side to side, and they will run you over, and they do a ton of damage. They can make your life a nightmare. And also, if you get swarmed, and, so you, and other enemies are absorbing your batterings, and they're hard to hit, that can be a challenge. That's why the second way of taking them out is also really useful, which is if you grab someone and throw them into the motorcycle guy, that always guarantees a kill. Whereas again, if you're trying to punch them or whatever, it takes more than one hit usually and they'll run you over. So here we go, battering. Again, memorizing their spawns is just the best way to deal with them. That way you can take them out early before they're causing too much trouble. So these clowns here, they do these sort of cartwheel attacks and they're vulnerable during their cartwheels. So the key with them is, so let's say you're trying to punch them what you would want to avoid is if they are cartwheeling and you start punching their cartwheel you'll end up doing like a string on them and they'll be invulnerable for the string and then by the time your string ends they're active and they'll punish you so you don't want to okay stun lock here i better just launch the oh i the <laughs> the penguins actually saved me use my bomb there um i'm being a little bit more liberal with the bombs here because one you don't really need you want to save the boss the bombs for penguin but I found a really good strategy for Penguin where just a few bombs would be okay. I used to try and beat this stage without ever using a bomb because of Penguin, the final fight. But because of my uh, recent findings on improving that fight, 
thanks to safe states uh that's helped so these guys are scary when they jump they're invulnerable when they're in that sort of initial jumping phase they're invulnerable you can catch them in the air but not on the way down so it's like a actually like a fighting game right like the starting the jump you can stuff them once they're active in the air you can't really stuff them all that well except with a jumping neutral kick ironically enough like street fighter and then uh on the way down they're kind of invulnerable too they're not fully invulnerable but it's really hard to punish so this is a nasty combination especially so the weird thing about mania mode is those red pitchfork guys satan clowns they get more aggressive as the game goes on so initially they're not too bad because they take forever to get their pitchforks out but in this final stage they are very scary because they have this massive range and they're also really aggressive and fast and so the really the only way to deal with them is to get around them or you can jump in on them you can actually do kind of like a fighting game strategy which is called an empty jump where you sort of jump over them but instead of kicking them you just jump and grab it grab them another strategy i mentioned again too is that especially on the sword guys is you can grab them release you know pummel them a little bit but instead of finishing your pummel combo you can release them and re-grab them ah i didn't do it there i, I could have sworn i was going to redo it but i didn't if you can get them in the corner, that's kind of good because they won't spawn directly into you. They'll always sort of spawn below or above you, which is a really nice setup. So if you can get the sword guys off screen, that's another way to deal with them. I lost the life there. That's all right. I gained an extend and getting through this stage without taking a death would be pretty impressive. So not too big of a deal as expecting taking that loss there. Get him off screen. There he goes. Yeah, I got to watch for those guys jumps. Got. Oh, I should have stunlocked him there. Yeah. Another really good strategy is just to grab someone if they're on, if they're sort of sandwiching you, and just throw the one them the other direction. This is like basic. That's basic fighting game strategy, though. Every fighting game that has a grab, you tend to do that in Fight and Rage, Streets of Rage, all that stuff. Also, funny, a funny little mechanic is if they're swagging on them on you, they'll basically taunt you by swallowing their sword every now and again. If you hit them with a battering during that, it'll actually damage them. Otherwise, they'll just uh, swat your battering out of the air. So here we go, almost at the end of the stage again. If you throw them off, they can't, they won't spawn into you and slice you. Instead, what they will do is they'll always sort of spawn a, bow, a blow or above you. So get, just getting them off screen. The chief knife T, I don't know what the T stands for, but uh, the chief guys, those guys are scary because, oh yeah, they anti air you too. I forgot to mention. You can't jump into sword guys, they'll anti air you. So here you go. What you got to do, you might see a double slam here. What you got to do is get them off screen like that there we go the scary thing is you, it's kind of scary there we go the double slam it's kind of scary to try and uh, punch lock them you can but once once you get two or three of them they will the other ones will come in and just slice through your punch lock so that's why I was doing the strategy of sort of just throwing them off screen over and over um, whenever those uh, chiefs get on the other side of the screen you have to try and block their knife with your own battering because they have deadly aim and they're very fast and they can get real obnoxious. I've just done in this run, I've done really excellent screen control. So it doesn't seem as challenging as it actually is. This boss fight strategy I actually came up with. The first time you fight this boss, it's going to be a nightmare because Batman isn't fast enough to get under him. So when he goes up like that, you'll see here, Batman is not fast enough to do that most of the time. And so what's going to happen, and you're not quite sure how to actually damage him either. So what's going to happen is this guy's just going to plow into you over and over and over and you're going to die. But then I discovered this strategy. I hadn't seen a replay do this before where you sort of jump in and then you dive back out like this. Watch you jump. It's like a dash dance in melee. You jump in, dive back out, jump in, dive back out. That will trigger him to stop, but then pull you out before you uh, get slammed. That's the way to deal with this duck. I did a really good fight there. Uh, yeah, ran away. I'm not sure if those will damage you during the death animation, but just in case, ran away and blocked. Here we go. The final boss fight. If you don't know how to deal with this guy, he can easily melt all your lives away. I mean, if you had nine, he could... If you don't know the fight, he could easily take nine of your lives. Not, not difficult at all. So the way this works is there's two different phases. The first phase is when he's walking. That's the phase you want because that's the phase you can kind of damage him. And you can grab, grab, pummel, pummel, re-grab pummel re-grab and then on the third he'll just go into a second phase so you should end it with a kick for that little extra damage this is the very scary phase where he flies around with his uh um umbrella and he does this attack here and then you can uh punch lock him but it's a very difficult punch lock i think a, a few times i've been able to punch lock him all the way through 
but he really resists it. So unless you do it absolutely perfectly, he's going to wiggle out just like that. However, if you start to understand his pattern where he'll come in and swoop you, you can avoid it. And so you can kind of get him into a nice little rhythm there as I did. Uh, this is a really good fight, I remember. And then this pattern, you just have to run away from it. There's nothing you can really do. I saw another guy do the... If you do jump and attack at the same time, you can do that kind of attack that has a lot of dam has a lot of screen coverage but hurts you. I tend to avoid that because it's not super reliable. Just run away. And if you run away long enough, he'll just go into his uh, swarm attack here. And here we go. Punch, punch, punch. Oh, we got him that. Regrab. Kick. Clear. Yeah, I was very hyped to get that. A good amount of resources left at the end, too. Um, this is one of those games where it goes one game over. There is no zero extend, by the way. So I had that I had that sliver of health. And then actually, if I had died, I would have just had one last life. And that's just two hits. So it looked pretty comfortable, but I was actually just three hits away from death. That's how uh, brutal that fight is. But yeah, I was very happy with how this turned out. And what's really cool is that the ending here, I'd never actually beaten the game in Mania mode up until this run. So usually what happens is when you beat the game, it says, oh, congrats to you. But it's kind of like Andros in Star Fox where it's like, but this isn't the true end. Now I'll try playing on special mode. It has like hard mode, special mode, and then Mania mode. Um, the difference being is just they increase the damage you take. They increase the aggression, you know, slowly. And the true Dark Knight, that's really cool. So that's what happens when you beat it on Mania mode. You become the true Dark Knight. Um, and then Mania mode is just full on. And then they also remove almost all the health items. Remove all the uh, items to help you out. So... Yeah, I hope you all enjoyed. Definitely check the game out. It's a huge favorite of mine. You're not going to be disappointed. Um, learn the punch system. Learn the uh, guard cancels. But also, you're going to have to learn how to abuse the grab system in the boss fights. A very satisfying, very fun game. Could not recommend enough. Deeply underappreciated SNES classic for sure. And it's made by Konami. And we'll probably never see a port of it since it's a licensed game. You never know with Batman licensing, but probably not. So, adios everyone. So thank you to 100-100-72-PCT Water, Adam Pearson, Ukshay Wadker, Dingo, Andy Capt, Another Joe, Anthony A, Aaron Solis, Ben, Ben Wynn, Borgie22, Brian Reboot, Brian Shiver, Chris Yusefovich, Chronic Burnout 3, Corio, Daniel Savage, Delta Tango 6, Disco Stasleya, Eric H, Full Set, Retro Schmupper, Geriatric, Don Maku, Haosu, Ilya, Kiwi, JLab, JBRPG, Joe Angelo, John Kelly, Game Boy Guru, K, K2, Kikoman589, Larage, Malaise, Mark Toms, Maz, Meher Klindrian, Minong, Queen Charlene, Nathaniel Davis, and Electron, Neon Dagger Games, Okla Kugels, Philip Mason, Portal 63, Raul, Real Skeen, Sketchy Raccoon, SLW, The Boot Rex, The Real Ikuzo, TRM, Sugumo, Yishi, Plasmo, and Yutsukaya. Thanks for watching.